ഓക്കെ 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 ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് സോ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു ദി സെക്കൻഡ് ലെക്ചർ ഓൺ അവർ ലോ സീരീസ് ടുഡേ ദിസ് ഈവനിങ് വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ടോക്ക് അബൌട്ട് the theme meaning of law that is the title of the lecture friends the term law has been used in a wide variety of ways by several writers for example some people describe law in a sense of scientific laws or what may be called descriptive laws what is it it is the idea that some people saying that there are some regular patterns in the behavior of natural objects that the law of motion or the law of forces thermodynamics gravitation these are the behavior of natural objects so they are called natural laws so some people argue that how objects in the nature behave is law so they call that they are natural laws they are the real laws this is one type of uh, interpretation being given to the idea of what is law and friends this notion of scientific law that we can see in terms of thermodynamics or laws of force and force or gravitational uh, forces the same way some social scientist tries to present man's behavior through the frame of scientific laws for example some social scientists claimed that marx uncovered the laws of historical and social development through his interpretation of a materialistic interpretation of history through his idea of dialectical materialism some people claim that marx have discovered the laws of history or in the idea called demand and supply which underlie man's economic behavior that demand and supply are connected to each other so that way the law of economic behavior of man can be stated or famous german sociologist emil durkheim says that men commit suicide and there are several reasons why suicide but one type of suicide which men commit is because of anomie anomie so anomie is a law according to emil durkheim which says that why some men commit suicide even though there are there are no some specific reason it's a law of emil durkheim or betty friedan says that women has a problem which has no name so she says that it is feminine mystic it's a law that women got a problem it's a law and all women got such a problem no women in the world exist without such a problem but it it got no name so she called the law of feminine mystic right so law many laws are being proposed by social scientist in a scientific way about man social behavior and this is an another type of interpretation about law and people say that this is law and there is an alternative interpretation or an explanation to what is law friends there is an alternative explanation it views law is a means of enforcing norms which ensures standards in human behavior 
what is that law is ensuring particular standard to ensure that man behave in an expected way so to tame his behavior law act as a deterrent that men have to behave in that way if not they will be punished in that way so that man is expected to behave that way and everybody know what that man will do and what that man will not do the sociologists are in line of uh, this way of thought and they argue that laws are a means of ensuring an expected way of behavior among men and in all societies there are laws which are in place which ensure that men behave in a particular way okay so friends according to this type of sociologist informal processes in traditional societies to very formal processes in typical modern societies you can find law exists in many many forms be it a most unimportant thing in a very traditional society or be it a very formal and highly credible activity in modern society in all the activities no matter the type of your society whether modern or ancient whether you know uh, traditional or you know uh, modern you will see that laws exist this is what some type of uh, soci sociologist argue that this way you can interpret law so scientific laws applied in the nature scientific laws in order to explain how man behave and laws uh, which control the behavior of man so a third way of interpretation and friends political theorist a fourth type of interpretation political theorist how often understands law in a more specific way so friends the aforesaid the previously said three types of laws and its interpretations are very broad when sociologists say law ensure behavior particular expected behavior in man it's a very broad idea or a social scientist arguing that man behave in a particular way and there is a law in in the behavior of man uh, that's a very broad view and also behavior of objects in the nature is a very broad view but friends in the fourth way of approaching law you will see that the so political theorists have a very specific kind of interpretation uh, and it's uh, specifically related to a distinctive uh, social institution that is state and friends uh, you see political theorists will argue that political theorists will argue that law itself is a distinct institution law itself is a distinct institution and you see uh, law for politi political theorist is clearly distinct and separated from other social norms or other social rules political theorists believe that laws can only found in modern organized political societies law is a feature of societies that is organized politically and rest of the rules and norms you are see are social they are norms they are customs uh, they are precedents they are not law this is certain moral standpoints of view in which men are expected to behave when there is custom when there are norms they are simply moral standards they are not law laws for political theorist is law existing in highly progressive highly organized political societies and it is very much distinct from social rules or social norms in a general sense friends law constitute set of rules law constitute set of rules or norms or customs it may be you know sorry sorry 
uh, what I'm saying is that uh, law constitute a set of rules uh, that rules are commands of the sovereign. That rules are the commands of the sovereign, not uh, not uh, rules, norms, or customs. They are not the commands of the sovereign. R laws, according to political theorist, laws according to political theorist are the commands, the prohibitions, and the entitlements of the sovereign. Sovereign commands and that command become law what is sovereign's command that is representatives enacting a law is command of the sovereign education policy is the command of the sovereign environmental policy anti dowry act child rights protection act they are all law because they are command of the sovereign and we are who are the commands uh, who are the sovereign we the people are come in india we the people we are the sovereign and it is our command and we obey that and that is law and friends this law that is law which political scientists view as command of the sovereign is distinct is different from other social rules norms and customs prevalent in the society of course all of you friends you live under rules norms and customs all of which you perpetually obey not only the laws or not only the commands of the sovereign you are also supposed to obey rules norms and customs which you practice in your personal life unconditionally you obey certain uh, rules and norms and customs but there are of course there are so many rules like that i mean uh, for example you ask you respect the elders you never use uh, abusive words against your elders right when you are walking across the street and you have seen a see very senior man uh, 70 years old 80 years old and you are just 18 and you whether you use abusive words against that man never it's never expected because we will never do that because it's a, a custom in our society that, uh, you know respect his age it's a custom but it is not a law it's not a statement law but it's a custom we respect that uh, that rule in society that uh, respect the elders or you knock at a door before you enter in the room of somebody else so your uh, mother got a room or your father got a room or your siblings got a room and to end, before entering that room you are supposed to knock at the door because they got a privacy your mother got a privacy father got a privacy cousins got a privacy your grandpa got a privacy grandma got a privacy so that you should respect that and whether the state has enacted a law that you should respect the privacy of other people so that you should knock at a door before you enter into the room of other people in your house not at all not at all it's a custom right so you are invited by your friends uh, your friend to his wedding right and so you are morally bound to invite him to your wedding give and take it's a custom if you have attended the wedding function of your uh, friend you are also supposed to invite your friend to your wedding it's a moral stance in society it's not a law or you are supposed to respect the teachers or you are supposed to uh, visit a person who is going to die or who is ill but uh, as a matter of respect to that person so uh, you know there is corporeal responsibility of a person what if your parents are always quarreling in at, at your home you 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 are seeing that every day your parents quarrel at your home and mother uses uh, you know uh, some words against father and father reciprocate with the same words you know and every day you are growing up seeing all these things in the family and you learn an idea that oh this way family is formed that uh, in, if if it is a family father uh, you know fight with the mother and mother fight with the father and they use abusive words against each other this way a family should lo look like and the right from your you got a sense or right from a fifth year uh, or five year age a person you have uh, you you have seen that you know parents fighting each other and at the age of 18 till still you are seeing that your parents are fighting and you will think that oh this way family is functioning in the society okay 
so when i form a family i should also behave that way though when i get married to someone i should fight with that person because that is the way family function that is what i have seen in my family no there are certain family norms right so you should not fight in uh, in the presence of your children this is a common uh, custom in families that you should never use abusive words uh, in the presence of you know your children have you seen on facebook so many young kids small cute kids simply using abusive words against their mother where do they get that words they get it there from family because they they happen to see that their mother is using such words against father or father is using such words against mother and they copy that simply copy that and they use it so you know elegantly against everybody they uh, they, they feel angry at so such facebook uh, you know video are so uh, so much available on internet so this is a moral lesson or some rule in parenting or in family that such norms uh, you know control our behavior that you do not fight in the presence of your children do not use abusive words in the presence of your children otherwise they will copy it so these norms are about how to behave in society in the family so uh, or you will you you will often uh, come to know that mothers are advising their girls that you should not sit cross legged in the presence of other people other elderly people you should not cross legged and girls are in our society are worried to you know a little bit you know hesitant to sit cross legged because uh, in our society when a girl uh, sit cross legged oh this girl is such a freedom loving girl a very bad girl you know you should not go with such girls you know they are very bad this is a social impression some customs in our society right so this way or when you when you uh, when you see some uh, you know elder per persons or seniors or teachers you are often uh, you know suggested to uh, unfold your you know uh, dhoti or mund when uh, you are talking to a senior or your parents or your teachers respect them right so this is certain customs but friends these are just norms just rules just customs in in the society of course it it helps us build a good society of course it helps us build a good society but friends in the face of laws of the state in the face of laws of the uh, or command of the sovereign these are nothing in the face of in the vicinity of the commands of the sovereign these rules norms and customs are uh, uh, you know you know uh, insignificant because command of the sovereign is the highest law command of the sovereign is the highest law that's why in india we say that constitution is the supreme law and all of you uh, uh, put the constitutional values at your heart and wherever you go you will say that i got certain fundamental freedom i am a citizen why i am a citizen because that is being stated in a law in the uh, in the constitution of india so that is the supreme law of the land highest command of the uh, sovereign of india that's the law right so let us understand it first you know uh, you know you know uh, laws and customs are different for example first uh, law is made by the government and it so applies throughout society in that way law reflects the will of the state will of the state means will of all of us will of all the people the law is is as i told you it is the command of the sovereign it is created by the government so it applies equally to all the people in the society so therefore law takes precedence over all other norms all other social ru rules and state laws never tell you that girls should not sit cross legged no state laws will treat all the genders equally if men are allowed to sit cross legged women are also allowed to sit cross legged law never dis uh, distinguish be between people it is applied equally to all the people irrespective of your gender caste creed other differences so conformity to rules of a sports club you are part or a students organization sfi abvp or uh, ksu you are part of those organization they got certain bylaws sfi got a bylaw or a church or a trade unions you are all part of these kinds of private you know uh, groups but friends that doesn't warrant that uh, since you have following the rules of such organization you are not supposed to follow the rules of the land or the law of the land friends not at all 
you are strictly advised to follow the rules of the land. If you have broken the law of the state, you will be penalized. But you know, if you have broken, uh, you know, the law of a sports club or the law of the church, or the law of the students' organization, uh, you know, you will be sometimes expelled from the uh, that organization. That is all. But you know, if you have, you know, broken, violated the law of the state, you will be punished. So you obeying rule of the church, your club, your community. Uh, do not give you exemption from obeying the laws of the state. You should obey, and if you don't, you will be punished. For example, you think this way: you are born to a family. So when you are young, you suddenly approach your father, and uh, your father, uh, for the reason that you get frightened by a thunder or hearing the barking of a dog. So you immediately approach the father and tell that there is thunder or there is a dog is barking because you think that your father is carrying you at that age the father is supposed to carry you and so when you are young you know you got the care of your father and you think that your father is your savior and always father is love for you of course your family is as an institution legalized by the state your institution called a family is legalized by the state for example your family is not a natural institution friends in your society you should never think that family is the highest institution family is the greatest institution in your society no it is wrong family is not the highest or greatest institution in your in your life state and its laws are the greatest institution in your life for example the very family to which you are sitting now from which you are attending in this lecture class is an institution legalized by the state laws for, for example friends it's not a natural institution as i told you why the ex ex for example before you were born before you were born your mother and your father were independent citizens of the state and they were free in the state and once they decided to form a union and the state legalized that union by requiring them to register according to uh, you know marriage laws of the state so once they are registered you are also enjoying certain claims and that is recognized by the state suppose your ma uh, mother and father are not a registered husband and wife according to state laws friends you can never claim any right associated with that particular family you cannot claim any right because that family is not recognized by the laws of the state so if they are not registered you don't have any right to claim that you are their offspring or child and you will not get any protection from the state so once you are born state laws demand that your parents give enough care to you and in the laws of the state if the parents are offenders and they are not giving you care that means if they don't care you or you know uh, which is expected to uh, provided to provide pro to be provided to a child but which are not being given you know the state laws will treat your parents as offenders and will punish them if they don't give you enough care when you were a small kid even at your age i think most of you are 18 am i correct you have crossed 18 or you are uh, below 18 you're 18 right and friends in case when your parents cared you during your childhood when you were small kids and your parents are legally registered husband and wife according to state laws you will have a natural claim to their property you will have a natural claim to the, all the property they own and if they wish to grant uh, to uh, uh, to give it back you to give it to you uh, of course you have a natural claim and that will be protected by the state and if they don't wish to give it to you of course you cannot make claim they can give it at their willing to anyone or to any uh, orphanage or any other institution there or university they can uh, you know give their property you know by their own wishes but if they wish you have a natural claim and it will be protected by the state 
In the same way, you are supposed to look after your parents once they are aged. And in case if you are not doing, you know, if you are not caring them, or they are supposed they are 80 or they are 90, you are certainly supposed to look after them. If you never look after them, if you don't look after them, friends, state will punish you. It's your responsibility because your family, your parents, they are all registered citizens of, you know, your country. So once they, because it is because they have brought up you as a citizen, as an adult, you have a moral responsibility to look after them according to the laws of the state. So your family and society in a broad sense is nothing but that lives under the patronage of state laws. So state is the highest institution. All other institutions are less significant friends. The laws of the state are, you know, supreme. That is one difference. And second friends, second difference is that, you know, state law is compulsory. State law is compulsory. So citizens are not allowed to choose I should obey this law and I will not obey this law. No. If a state law is passed, all of you are supposed to obey it. Because law is backed by uh, a system of coercion, coercion and punishment. If you violate that, you will be punished. You are supposed to follow traffic rules. You are supposed to follow environmental laws, uh, women's protection laws, domestic violence prevention act, consumer laws, child protection laws, human rights laws. So many, so many laws in the society, which are cre not created by society, but by the state. You cannot choose between laws and you can, you can say that, you know, today I will obey consumer law. Tomorrow I will obey, uh, tomorrow I will not obey consumer law. Day after tomorrow I will obey, uh, you know, you know, environment law, but I will not follow, you know, human rights law. You can't say that. Once it is, you know, enacted, you are supposed to, uh, no, you should compulsorily, you know, obey the laws. So once a law is always a law and you should obey all the laws. That is the second point. And for instance, there is a third point. That is law has a public quality. Law has a public quality. In that it consists of published and recognized rules. Law is not rules enacted in privacy and documented and put in a uh, steel shelf. No, everybody know that what is that law. It is your responsibility that you should know some particular laws. It is your duty in the, it is part of your citizenship. You're a good citizen when you know all the laws in, the, uh, in, in your society. So law got a uh, you know, public quality. And this is achieved in part uh, by enacting law through a formal and usually public legislative process and once a policy document is being drafted by the parliament it will be put into the public domain for uh, discussion and the public can respond to law so you, you might remember UGC has uh, recently published a, a, a policy education policy document called blended learning 60 percentage of classes are offline and 40 percentage of classes are online and this way future of Indian higher education that has uh, you know higher education domain should look like that is what UGC said and it invited public response or when the union government last year published what may be called an educational policy it put into the public domain for responses and you, you, all, you are all supposed to give responses to the government so that way you know laws are enacted in public spirit and we all should know what that particular law and we should criticize it we should thoroughly check it before it is it is becoming a law and at this, uh, and friends for example you know uh, the punishment punishment for the violation of law is guaranteed and it is predictable since law is public we all know that violation of that law brings punishment. So violation is also, you know, uh, invite punishment and we know what to do and what not to do because the violation of a particular rule invite a punishment and everybody know everything. Right. And fourth, law is usually recognized as binding upon on those to whom it applies 
law is usually recognized as binding upon those to whom it applies even if a particular law may be regarded as unjust or unfair once you are living in a land and that land has passed a particular law friends even if you disagree that even if you think that that particular law is unfair and unjust no way you can't you know disobey that law you are uh, should compulsorily uh, you know you know strictly obey that law that is your citizenship otherwise you have to quit from that country no matter what whether it is fair or unfair once the law is passed and that is the command of the sovereign and who is the sovereign it's you people you are the uh, you are the sovereign once that law is passed no matter you should compulsorily obey the law you know law is therefore more than simply a set of enforced commands it is not simply a set of enforced commands it is it also embodies certain moral claims implying that that law should be obeyed so there is a moral aspect to laws what is that you should obey that law that is a moral aspect obligation is mandatory obligation is mandatory to laws so you are supposed to obey laws even if you think that law, particular law is unfair think of the reason twitter and whatsapp controversy friends you might remember in recent days you know still it is going on what is that you know uh, twitter and whatsapp policies say that they are free speech party they are free speech party what is free speech party that means once they have given you a domain for doing some activity you for example you say you 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 sing well and you uh, you 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 have created a content a music content and you shared it in your personal whatsapp and shared it to everybody and friends according to whatsapp policy it is encrypted what is encrypted according to whatsapp policy encryption policy you are the only person who are responsible for the creation of that content and whatsapp don't know what you have done in their domain because it is encrypted and once you created it and to whom you have shared it and only that person know that you have done this and that is between the sender and the receiver it is only a, a matter of public knowledge and otherwise you know whatsapp don't know what happened between you and that particular person so it's a knowledge between you and that uh, particular person that is the receiver and the sender that is called encryption policy and whatsapp don't have any access to that encrypted content on your whatsapp but what the law of our land recent law that is uh, being passed by the government of india you remember friends i i, I hope you remember the information technology guidelines for intermediaries and digital media ethics court rules 2021 that's a recent controversy law which has created a tug of war between government of india and it whatsapp it says that this rule says that social media companies are responsible to track the origin of a particular content being shared on uh, social media platforms and if you have created a content and uploaded on whatsapp it is the responsibility of the whatsapp company to know that it is you who are the creator of that content and you are the first person who sh created and shared that content in the, in the in the whatsapp but whatsapp policy says that we are in no way responsible because we are an encrypted platform and we never look into what is being shared inside our platform that is a whatsapp policy friends and they say that they operate according to the law of america where their headquarters is and you know it created serious trouble legal tussle between government of india and whatsapp company and government has given an ultimatum to whatsapp otherwise you have to quit india because law of the land is supreme of course friends that is correct why because it is the command of the sovereign who created that law the bjp government uh, you know created enacted that law and what is the legitimacy for the bjp government to pass that law because it got majority 271 is the uh, basic minimum required uh, you know number of seats to form a government in the indian parliament and it got that so that it has all the legitimacy to pass the law because it is a wish of the people 
and you have given you have given sanction to the government to pass that particular law and once it is passed it is a responsibility of all entities inside the country to follow that particular law okay so the idea is that friends you know you will ask them is it fair is it fair is there no law is there no law beyond the command of the sovereign so interesting question right friends no law beyond the command of the sovereign there is no law other than the law of the land the supreme law the command of the sovereign the wish of the command of uh, the wish of the sovereign it's a very serious dispute in uh, legal languages there is, is there no other law uh, which goes beyond the command of the sovereign so friends in this debate there are two positions what exactly is law what exactly is the position of law what exactly is the meaning of law there are two positions one is the natural law position other one is the positive law position which i have discussed uh, in uh, in length uh, in the previous lecture that is people argue that people argue that the relationship between law and morality is a, an oldest question the relationship between law and morality is an oldest question that you have certain moral points of view uh, but uh, that faith faith you have certain uh, faith and that faith always conflict with the law of the state because law of the state is created on the basis of reason constitution of india is created out of human reason constitution of india is not created out of human emotion or human passion it is created out of rational will but you have faith you are a religious man or you have certain value system you are a part of some particular groups and you have certain belief systems because you are part of that group and that always come in conflict with the laws and that occasion friends which should exactly prevail over which it's a very serious unresolved question in legal parlance that's that is because a law and morality this is an issue of law and morality uh, uh, and it's a serious debate in political theory also and philosophers have been taxed with this particular question since the ancient world what is the origin of this law and morality what is the origin of you know uh, origin of you know obedience to law how does you know obedience to law is justified does law merely give does law merely give effect to set of higher moral principles or is there a clear distinction between law and morality is there any distinction between law and morality how far does or should law of the community seek to enforce standards of ethical behavior how the law of the society should enforce ethical behavior in you such questions go to the heart of the distinction between natural law and positive law natural law and positive law and on the surface of law on the surface of this debate that is between conflict between law and morality there are so many things to be looked after friends law is a distinct form of social control you understand that law is a distinct form of social control that we want to control the behavior of man that is the very purpose of law we want to control the behavior of man and law is backed by means of enforcement because those who have created law has a mechanism to enforce that law in our society it is called legal system and once that legal system face any problem there is police mechanism to enforce laws so it's a you know strict allegiances to laws are commanded it says what we can do and what we cannot do it's uh, state laws treat you uh, as someone who should who should show certain allegiances to law 
and you are not supposed to disobey law so it is strict law is very strict but friends you see state law treat you not as a child who is under protection of her parents but you are a would be legal citizen in future even if you are a child and you are under the protection of your uh, parents even if you are under the protection of your parents the law treat you as a legal citizen right and once you are grown up in that society you should certainly show allegiances to law certainly show allegiances to law but you know morality on the other hand is concerned with an ethical question what is that it is concerned with an ethical question what is that it talks the difference between right thing or wrong thing morality it talks about the difference between right thing and wrong thing law is an easier concept to understand but morality is not law can be understood as a social fact it has an objective character law has an objective character it can be studied and analyzed but when it comes to morality friends morality is by its very nature subjective my morality is not your morality their morality morality is different so morality is a matter of opinion or a judgment but law is not so our moral simply the custom or convention our morals ideals in society is morality in short the concern only of the individual these are all difficult questions to answer when you compare morality with the law for example under sharia muslim man is entitled to divorce his wife if he utters talaq talaq and talaq but law in the country says that your marriage is legalized by the state laws therefore you have contractual obligations towards the spouse because you have to fulfill certain contractual obligation you cannot simply divorce you have to fulfill certain formalities because it is through a formality that government has united you and even if, if you want to you know divorce you have to follow certain formalities you cannot simply say talaq and say you are divorced no because you are living under a law not even if you are a religious person and sharia is your law friends sharia is below the constitutional law and you have certain you know uh, obligations in your marital contract so you see morality conflict with faith conflict with the uh, laws or reason or you think this way you are a christian and according to christian belief marriage takes place in the heaven so no matter what happens in earthly life you have to suffer you have to tolerate why because you are united by god's wish you are united in god's kingdom and no thing in the earthly world is supposed to separate you not even the state law that is the belief of a christian what happens friends if your husband torture you are you supposed to tolerate all these things because you are a christian and according to christian belief system you are supposed to tolerate all these sufferings because god's land will come after all these you know sufferings so a wife needs to suffer all the beatings all the abusive words of your husband because you are a christian you are united in god's land what is what the state law says you are not supposed to suffer all the torture at the hand of your husband if your husband torture you you should separate if there is no other means you should separate because law says that you have right to divorce conflict between morals and laws see this is conflict so those you know friends those thinkers who insist that uh, there are so many writers who insist that law should be based on morality and those thinkers who says that law should be based on morality are called a natural law thinkers natural law thinkers such as as i told you uh, you know thomas hobbes thomas jefferson john locke this tradition was you know friends initiated by plato and aristotle that there are some higher laws 
and medieval thinkers like thomas aquinas also said that all the laws of the political order should conform to natural law that is laws morality that should come conform to morality but friends it was in the 19th century this tradition was challenged and 19th century writer said that the 19th century scientific movement said that all laws should be based based on reason not on morality all laws should be based on reason not morality but friends in the 10th century as i told you the world had witnessed so many problems the nazi torture the stalinist tortures killings of people and even nuremberg trials happened 1945 46 addressed the war crime not in the name of positive law but in the name of natural law natural rights or moral grounds so prosecution to war criminals were given not on the basis of positive laws but on the basis of moral grounds so that means friends the central conception of moral laws or natural laws is the idea that laws should conform to certain morals there should be certain moral standards within law that is the purpose of law is to enforce morality in society purpose of all all laws is to enforce morality so this notion uh, was as i told you was attacked in the 19th century uh, by oh, sorry not 19th century 20th century by a writer called john osborne j o h n o s b o u r n e john osborne john osborne called the science of positive law positive law is the idea that law should be free from laws of the morality laws of the religion laws of mystical assumptions the laws of your state the laws of your state should be different from laws of morality laws of religion and laws of mystical assumptions so this was in line with thomas command uh, sorry uh, thomas hobbes idea that law is the command of the sovereign that legal positive that is called legal positivism legal positivism what is legal positivism all laws are command of the sovereign not you know laws need not be based on morality of the society and in 19th century john austin has developed the idea of legal positivism it was in 19th century john austin proposed the idea of legal positivism what is legal positivism he saw that the defining feature of law is not conformity to morals whether you propose education law or environment law or consumer laws your laws need not be based on ethical standards or religious standards or moral standards law should be based on the sovereign person or body should be based and enforced by a sovereign authority and friends the basis of law is not that it is obeyed the basis of law is not the idea that you obey law that's why law is there it is not like that law is there because law is enacted by a legitimate body a legitimate body enact law law is created by a legitimate authority that is why we obey law law is not law because we obey law but law is law because it is enacted by a legitimate authority that's why friends when you look at international laws the, the problem of international law is that it is not created by an international sorry internationally uh, legitimate body un is not recognized by all the all the states 
law is, uh, uh, the laws passed by un is considered on moral grounds not on binding grounds you international treaties or un resolutions for example they are basis of international law but you know no nations are bound by such laws why because such international laws are not created by a legitimate authority but nation state create legitimate uh, laws and people obey that why because laws of the nation laws of your state are created by a legitimate process that's why you obey laws but why international peace treaties are not agreed why international human rights laws are not being agreed because such laws are not passed by a legitimate authority those who create enact such laws do have no legitimacy it is just certain moral standards that has created such law even human rights are like that human rights declarations by the un is not binding they are certain moral standards why because human rights declaration are not enacted by a legitimate authority uh, that is why no nation state are supposed to consider it binding so friends a modern attempt to refine legal positivism of john austin was done by hla hart hla hart was an another writer who uh, attempt to refine legal positivism of john austin he was trying to explain law not in terms of moral principle but in terms of the purpose that particular law service in human serve in human society that hla hart was saying that law should be approached in terms of the purpose it serves in society whether it got any purpose you have so many laws why such laws in society and he suggested laws come from certain primary and secondary rules laws come from certain primary and secondary rules that is what he argued and if you want to know more about this primary and secondary rules you may please refer to uh, op gobas readings i have suggested for you and friends and another alternative view of law emerged in the 20th century this is called legal realism legal realism what is legal realism legal realism is the idea that all the laws are judge made laws all the laws are judge made laws and it is only ju uh, judges who know exactly what is law not the citizen not the ruler it was uh, proposed by an american jurist called oliver wendell holmes oliver wendell holmes that you can refer to op gobas reading i have given you on google classroom oliver wendell holmes who says legal uh, realism that says that it is really the judges who make law it is because judges who decide how to look after issues of law in this sense all laws are thought to be judge made because judges interpret laws of course your parliamentarians enact laws but who interpret laws it is the judges so in a sense laws are judge made all laws are judge made and whatever laws your parliament passed all laws you know in a sense go to court and where you challenge it and judges give a final interpretation of law that is why all laws are judge made laws that is what oliver wendell holmes said but friends that idea will not do any service to democracy right it is an anti democratic idea uh, friends this is you know a different uh, interpretations of uh, law with this i am going to wind up this lecture friends Uh, that's all about today's lecture and friends the floor is open for discussion we can have a discussion last parne uh, edana last parne 